that's the robot? Okay, sure. Today I'm gonna show you how to make Steampunk 7 of 9. I mean Atomic Heart. For this build, you'll need foam floor mats, paint, super glue, hot glue, a nine foot tall actor. Hey, how tall are you? 5'1". Hmm, that's not gonna work. You're not allergic to gamma rays, are you? What? Demon Core! <laughs> All right, I think we're good. You're such a jerk. A gray morph suit, a black one-piece swimsuit, or a leotard. They're wearing ballet gear, so just go straight to the source. There's no need to reinvent the wheel. A gold bolero jacket. I, I mean, if you insist on being left, I, I just think they would get it if you were right. A chrome no-face mask. Stars. Buckles. Craft foam. Putty. Cutting tools. Sanding tools. Safety gear. Scissors, razor pens, and a box cutter. Where's my box cutter? Oh, no, don't. No, no. Oh, God, why? Why with the creepy forehead snake stomach pouch? Why? why? Who designs a robot that way? Seriosna. Oh, je moi. First I made a template to fit the actor, then I transferred that to cardboard. I'm starting with cardboard because it's easy to refine when I inevitably make mistakes. See, I'm figuring this out from scratch, and if I have to go back and make all these changes, it makes more sense for me to do that with a highly expendable material before I scan it in and clean it up and make it available to you. Oh, complete templates will be available linked in the description down below. I made sure to include the registration marks. These will tell me how to fit the pieces back together later on. Then I cut out the individual shapes as well as the registration marks. I also labeled them, which helps. Y you know, you never think you're gonna be the person who accidentally builds two left sides until you do. <sighs> it took forever. Then I traced the pieces onto some scrap foam from a cut up floor tile. I weighted the floor mats down with machinist blocks so the foam doesn't slide around while I'm working. I'm using a white paint pen here, honestly out of habit. I, I could have used a Sharpie. See, I've been avoiding Sharpie because I've been building a lot of Star Wars stuff, which is white. It's all it's all white and impossible to erase. But this one, th this costume is going to take so many layers of paint. So yeah, you can get away with Sharpie for this particular project. Anything gloss black is just, your notations are going to be buried under so much paint. So now here I am, still in previous project mode, wasting my paint pen. When I finished, I cut them out with a work knife and scissors. These pieces are for the cheek jaw and neck. I'm gonna complete the same steps here as well. All right, now that they're all cut out, these pieces comprise one half of the head flattened. They have to be glued back together, but to make them three-dimensional and not all geometric and wireframey, shut up, it's a word, I'm gonna need to heat form them with my heat gun. I skewered them first so that I wouldn't burn my fingertips. This gets hot. It's not a hairdryer. It's basically a nuclear-powered hairdryer. You do not want to mix them up. Not again. When they were hot enough, I shaped them with my hands and a solid round shape. I made this one out of resin, but you could also use your knee or a trailer hitch, really anything stronger than foam. As I finished each piece, I stuck it in a bowl and weighted it down so that it would retain its curved shape as it cools. I'm recording this around Easter, so you can real easily pick up some Easter egg shapes, which are great for foam smithing but also so are kitchen appliances, like, you know, mixing bowls. It's just, I try not to mix the prop making stuff with the cooking stuff. This is me trying not to poison myself. I mean, like, not all the time. When the pieces were solid, I glued them together with super glue. If you have a well-ventilated space, you can use contact cement, which being meant for shoes, it's actually a little bit better for these projects. It's more flexible, but it takes a really long time to air out. This is kind of an enclosed space for the actor, and I don't know how much time I have between finishing this project and doing the shoot. So I'm just, I don't want any chemical fumes in there. I'm just, just trying not to poison the people that I work with, you know? But Radiating your actors is fine. Gotta draw a line somewhere. So, super glue. As I did this, I made sure the registration marks lined up. It's possible to get away with a little bit of drift, like a few millimeters of misalignment with the registration marks. E even a quarter freedom unit, just because of the flexible nature of the foam. But yeah, I try to avoid having to deal with that. You know, it's, it's better to take your time and get it right than have to make up for a mistake later on. I'm just saying, like if you make a mistake, don't lose hope. You know, worst case scenario, you burn an afternoon. When the pieces were all together, I had one half of the mask. So I took the same templates from before and flipped them in order to get the mirror image and then repeated the steps to make the other side. Now that I have two halves, I was able to glue them together to form a complete 
face. Face? Scott, the opening in the front still needs a lot of work. But first, this is all together now and you can see that it's lumpy. And that's not really an issue because this is gonna get covered up by detail, but I would like it, you know, just for me, I would like this to be perfect. So I'm gonna reheat form it which is going to get the foam to try and go back to its original shape and it won't be able to because it's glued together. So that will fix the lumps to an extent. Let's get something spherical in there. Actually, you know what I could use? It's that time of year where all the craft stores have gotten their Easter decorations too early. So they're all on sale way before the holiday and right after the holiday. The holiday stuff is on sale. And that is when the cosplayers strike. This is actually coming off like an alien. Oh, there we go. There we go. That's like a, a sci-fi, high sci-fi space helmet. So much better. And like it has to hold the correct shape while it's cooling down. So I'm gonna shove this dummy head back in. Okay, so that's gonna have to sit there while I break for lunch. I also put that in the bull form as well. The most stable configuration. Yeah, that's not an accident waiting to happen. And that's why I wear steel-toed boots. Look how much better that is. That's almost a decent night helmet, like, like a base for a night helmet. I'm gonna save that. Future Jake, save that pattern. Focus, Jake. Rack focus. Next, I refine the face opening with my razor pen and the rotary tool. All these little changes are getting translated to the templates, by the way. I'm the only one who has to deal with the whole figuring stuff out part of the build process. It's called rapid prototyping. I'm gonna leave the chin open for the time being, just out of convenience. Next, I'm gonna make the ears. I did this using bevel strips. First, a triangle. I cut two of them into equal lengths with slanted ends. This is so that there's more surface area for the glue to adhere to. You know, when you have all this tension of taking something straight and bending it into a circle, it's gonna try and pull itself apart. So you want as much gripping surface as possible. Then I cut the top point off of the strip to create a flat edge. Then I glued the ends together. Finally, I attached them to either side of the head. I didn't use a ring of glue all at once because the amount of pressure that you have to apply to get it to stick could deform it and prevent it from coming out perfectly circular. I'm trying to take my time on this build because, well, because I'm waiting for materials to arrive in the mail, if I'm being totally honest. Then I used half circle bevel strips to make the inner rings of the ear. I sort of stacked them on top of one another because it's such a tight space. They don't really want to lie flat. The inner space is so tight that I actually had to cut the last one into a quarter bevel and use a foam dowel offcut for the center. That'll need some fill and paint. So I filled in some of the gaps with DAP Alex Fast Dry Putty. Fast to them is like 20 minutes, by the way, to the DAP folks. T 20 is good. 20 is good. They also make a putty that takes 24 hours. So, all right, 20 minutes in front of a box fan, fine. Whatever, it's cool. It's cool. I don't know. Then I painted it with gloss black acrylic house paint. So this is gonna take six layers before I can even do the metallic coat. And because this is a geometrically spherical, roughly spherical project with gravity exerting its invisible forces on all different sides, I can only do about 60 degrees of surface area at a time, which is so much. Endless, endless layers of black paint. Uh, I paint, I die, I paint again. Witness me! Oh, I'm sorry. Did you have to go through some kind of discomfort for this process? Now, the other option to get it done faster is Plasti Dip, which by all means, you know, go for it. I would have done it. I would have done that. But it's a little bit more expensive, and this time of year, the weather just is not cooperating. You know, you can't use this stuff indoors. Not to mention, it smells like death. And again, trying not to asphyxiate my clients. I, I'm a saint. You could always body double for Gwendolyn Christie. She's always getting work. I have a full meter on Gwendolyn Christie. I, I don't know what that means. Three freedom units. Oh, just say the yard. No. Resident Evil Tall Lady? While it dries, I'm gonna make the outer armor plates. I'm using two millimeter foam for that. I traced a template and cut them out. She has seven visible plates, but you gotta assume there are more, either under the hairline or below the neck. So I cut an extra one, then I glued them on one by one. You can overlay them if you want. It's up to you. I didn't find a need to. For the rivets, I used offcuts from Ben Eadie's chainmail pattern. Although you could in theory cut them with a hole punch. 
Yeah, I don't see why you couldn't. I don't know, I still have a bunch left over from when I did the King Arthur build. Sure, probably, why not? Then I glued on the sides of the visor rim, which I made out of four millimeter foam. I rounded the edges on my belt sander. For the chin strap part, I used a rounded bevel. Put an even smaller bevel under that. Then I added more flat two millimeter panels covering the throat. Well, the chin, the under the chin area. Really. Then I continued with the painting. To speed up the dry time, I'm using a box fan. Also to save time, in between the drying sessions, I'm working on other parts of the costume, because there's, there's a lot that needs to be done. The body, you could make all those limb pieces individually out of foam. You can also get away with the gray morph suit. Generally, you can actually see through this material when it's pressed right up against your face. But if you have the option, get one with the face hole. Just because it's one less sensory obstruction. There are little stars on the hands, so I picked up a bunch of little metal stars. Couldn't find any red, which is nuts. I mean, you would think in America, I'd be able to find red stars. I, I get that it's a Soviet holdover, but it's part of the whole red, white, and blue America color scheme. So I had to paint them. More painting, always with the painting. With metallic red. When the paint dried on that, I attached pins to the back with super glue. Then I pinned them to the palms. This is also one of those details that you can get away with omitting because it's easy to hide the fact that that detail isn't there just by hiding your palms. Whereas having it there means you can't really make a tight fist. The stars are pointy, you know? Next, I worked on the chin strap. It's just a half cylinder bevel, pretty straightforward. Now for the hair. It can look super complicated and intimidating, but I was actually able to pretty easily recreate that texture with foam triangular bevel strips. I cut a section from the strip and then trimmed the ends at a slanted angle to form a point, and I glued it on with super glue. Then I repeated that step across the forehead and temples to form bangs with the center part. Now, if you're having trouble finding these bevels, which is perfectly understandable, you can actually make them by cutting slanted strips from a foam sheet. It just requires a steady hand, a metal ruler, a great knife sharpener, probably some WD-40, and a lot of patience. So I mean, look for the thing that will make your life easier before you burn all that time. If you can find the strips, it'll save you so much time. As the hair strands encroach upon the braid halo, it's kind of a halo. Yeah, sure. I'm decreasing the length of the strands so that rather than forming a swoop, they begin to form a more circular shape. This is in order to replicate a natural center hair part. Then I left a space empty for the braid and placed the next bevel along the top trace line. The pointed ends of the bevel strips should fall on the center seam of the dome. As I neared the top, I also filled in the other side. This was in an attempt not to waste these lengths of foam bevel because I have a limited supply. I ended up running out anyway, like right at the end. So I filled in the remainder with trench offcuts from the Roomba droid mod that I did a little while back. I saved shapes that might be useful. What's really bugging me though is as soon as I did this, I found just enough of the material, like exactly the amount that I needed. I'd fallen behind the workbench. Finally, I added an additional strand to the front just to add more layers. I smoothed out the hairline using Dap Alex Fast Dry Putty, mostly to erase the seams because that's the only seam that the strands didn't cover. Then I painted it with gloss black acrylic house paint. Again, I had to do many layers in order to make it shiny, but this first one is just to even out the color and also reveal any potential defects. Sometimes you just can't see it until the whole thing is a uniform color. Well, shade. I polished those off with putty, a little bit of sanding, and then gave it five more coats until at last it was the level of shininess that worked for me. The chin and neck are a little bit complicated. It's supposed to be skin tight, but if it is, then it will be too tight to put on a human. You know, they designed this to look cool in a computer, and in real life that doesn't quite, it's, you gotta make these little concessions for the comfort of the actor, you know? Or else they will be very unhappy with you. So, I have to create an opening in the chin strap and separate it from the neck. Luckily, the thing is covered in metal plates, so there are a number of false aesthetic seams that you can use to hide a real seam. Then I added a snap buckle to the interior. Now again, you, you have to consider that someone's gonna wear this, so I did increase the size of this just to build in some comfort leeway, and I added a round bevel underneath just to smooth out the edge. But this is an area of the costume where if you can find a flatter buckle or even build it into the, you know, the depth of the foam, that might be a good idea. Then I cut more two millimeter 
foam for the plates that are gonna cover up the gray foam. And then I had to do another six layers of paint on that as well. So while those were drying, I worked on the braid. For the braid, I used wider foam half round bevels. These are a lot easier to find than the triangular ones. Although usually what's the most commercially available in craft stores is white, thus requiring even more layers of paint. So I, I caught a little bit of a break on that one. I clamped off one end in a vise and then braided them just like you would braid hair or holla. <laughs> Her hair is bred, your government is invalid. Oh, which is actually super easy. I thought I was gonna have to learn a new knot, but this is like, this is super simple. This is the easiest thing to do. It's just like making rope. You know, if anyone else was on a week long camping trip in the ocean and had nothing to do but make rope, endless rope. I don't know what my life is, but I'm gonna see where this goes. However, one foam strip was not quite long enough to go around the whole head. So once I braided through one length, I had to add more strips. These are gonna have to be in the back so that the seams are less visible. I mean, they don't have to be, it's just, it's a good idea. And then I added them to the head. To get the height to match the triangle hair bevels, I used a spacer. Well, it's not so much the height as it is, you'll get a better contact surface for gluing if it's blank foam as opposed to painted foam. I glued on the completed portion first, just to help stabilize it while I did the final braids. And there we go. Then I puttied the part where I had spliced in the new section using more fast dry putty. Now you can see that the sheen or glossiness doesn't quite match. So I gave them more layers of paint, endless paint. While they were drying, I picked up a face shield. These are actually really common. They're chrome no face masks. I keep a few in stock just at all times because during the Among Us craze of October, 2020, you could not find these things to save your life. I set aside a star for the center of that. I painted the surrounding helmet portions of the mask in two stages. First silver for the neck using Molotow chrome. Then I had to wait for that to dry and I'll need to mask that before painting the hair. And then I spray painted the hair gold. Now I'm actually trying not to layer this on too thick, partially because yeah, I don't want drips, but also an uneven paint job is actually gonna look a little bit better on camera. I was lucky enough to have a warm-ish window of weather where I could do this outside. For the throat, I used a silver ring choker necklace, which you know, you could actually make with the thin foam bevels, but it'd just be, you know, Endless painting. I'm, I'm getting a little, a little tired of the painting at this point. <laughs> and she was like, Jake, just go to Claire's. Why don't you just go to Claire's? Cause that's not something that I would have ever thought to do. I mean, thank you is the correct human response. That's how you say that, right? Human, human, human. Yeah, social niceties. When all of the paint was dry, I carefully glued an extra star in the set, an extra star. I used three, I used three stars on this. 50, I got 47 more. I don't know what I'm gonna do with these. And then I put it all together. And that's how to infringe Jerry Ryan's copyright. She wouldn't sue, right? She's not wearing the cat suit anymore. It's not like she designed the cat suit. Oh, who designed the cat suit? And that's how to make left from atomic heart. Now you can overthrow communism or something. I don't really know. I wasn't paying attention. Dialogue is atrocious. It doesn't fit. Really? Oh, you know what? I was using your pre-Hulk measurements. We're cool, right? You're paying to replace my entire wardrobe in triple XL. I'd like to take a moment to talk about Patreon. No, but for real though, this video is only possible because of an incredibly generous donation from longtime patron Gabriel. It's because of those occasional infusions of cash that I'm able to go the extra mile with the jokes and effects and prop quality. There, there was a lot of intricate materials on this one. <laughs> Foam bevels add up, not to mention the costume pieces. So if you enjoyed this and want to see more content of this caliber and want your build request to carry a bit more weight, then think about heading on over to the Patreon page where you can enjoy ad-free early uploads. Thanks for watching. Happy crafting. See you later. But irradiating your actors is fine. Gotta draw a line somewhere. <laughs> 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 <laughs>